Okay, good morning everyone and um, uh, welcome back after the weekend. Uh, it's a new week and I hope it's going to be a good uh, week for each one of you and a good learning experience as well and um, growing uh, uh, in the knowledge of the word and uh, in your relationship with uh, Christ. Uh, before we begin our classes uh, for this week and this morning, can um, uh, one of you please lead us in prayer, please? Anyone? Can I ask Christopher to lead us in prayer? Christopher, can you lead us in prayer, please? Okay, Christopher's not there. And uh, Prabhakar Rao, can you lead us in prayer? <clears throat> we can't hear you, Prabhakar, sorry. All the classmates and especially Pastor Selina and Jesus of praise for the leaders for it that we can learn and we can understand which you want us to learn. Uh, mighty warriors in the coming days as the kingdom builders in the coming days, Father. Thank you so much, Father. Each and every moment of this class and upcoming classes, we dedicate unto you. We dedicate unto your name. I ask this prayer in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Prabhakar. We couldn't hear uh, most of your prayer, but uh, uh, just uh, say an amen to what you have uh, prayed for. Thank you. So, sorry, might be network issue, Pastor. So sorry. Yes, for yes, no problem at all. I understand. That's totally fine. Thank you. Um, Okay, so we we'll continue looking at the developmental needs of uh, children in different age groups. So uh, I'm going to, uh, you know, run through it quickly because we kind of got, um, uh, you know, a, a feeling or uh, a, an idea about um, uh, what we really want to say in each age group. So it's it's going to, going to be a little repetitive. So I'm not going to be explaining because I've kind of explained most of it. Um, just a few points here and there I will highlight. So we looked at uh, the developmental needs of children ages three and four, and uh, we began looking at the developmental needs of children uh, in uh, in uh, the age group of uh, five to seven. Um, we looked at the physical, mental, social, um, and emotional uh, needs, their spiritual needs as um, well. What are the spiritual messages they need to hear? Um, so uh, we stopped at, uh, you know, uh, how they hear and understand the Bible stories. Uh, these children are able to understand um, uh, uh, Bible stories. They're able to actually answer a few questions that you ask them regarding the main points in the story, not the details, but just the main points. Uh, they're also, you know, able to understand uh, uh, stories that go historically in timeline. Now, when I say this, I'm not saying that, you know, uh, they understand everything, but they're beginning to understand because they're still... Uh, you know, um, uh, uh, in uh, ages five to seven, just grade uh, uh, one and two. Um, so, you know, uh, if you start with creation and then God creating Adam and Eve and then uh, Cain and Abel and go on, you know, they're able to understand that stories uh, uh, or the narratives in the historical setting, uh, in the timeline uh, that is there in the biblical timeline. Also, if you're looking at um, narrating to them stories from the Gospels, then they're able to understand, you know, from Jesus' birth uh, going forward. Uh, or if you're looking at uh, Acts, they're able to understand, you know, after Jesus died, he rose again, he ascended to heaven, and then, you know, the events uh, following that. They're also able to understand abstract uh, concepts um, like, you know, uh, self-sacrifice, how to love others, about faith, uh, what is doubting, what is, uh, uh, you know, uh, unforgiveness, what is forgiveness and uh, guilt. Uh, 
so these are the kind of stories that they're able to hear and understand. So you can talk about uh, stories uh, even relating to abstract con uh, concepts because they're beginning to understand. So this, since they're beginning to understand, we need to keep it very, very uh, simple and uh, clear because they just receive everything as you just tell them. Literally, they just take it as you uh, explain to them. And then lastly, for these children in this age group, they're learning to pray together. So you can get them to pray together, also pray individually, but they need help how to pray. Uh, so, you know, <clears throat> if you want them to pray, then, uh, you know, you can just stand behind. Sometimes when I ask children in this age groups to pray, uh, they're very shy. They don't know what to say. So I tell them I'll help them. So just give them the confidence. So, you know, when they come up and stand in the front, I quietly, uh, you know, give them small sentences, put small sentences in their ear and that uh, what they hear, they just, uh, you know, uh, praying it out uh, in the class. So just basically helping them uh, uh, to learn to pray um, individually and also, you know, uh, pray to uh, together. Okay. So, um, this is the uh, developmental needs of children in uh, uh, ages uh, 5 to 7. Uh, we'll move on to the developmental needs of children ages uh, 7 uh, to 9. Okay. Uh, intellectually or mentally, these children, uh, they live in the present, which means that, you know, everything that you are narrating to them or teaching to them needs to be connected to their uh, present uh, environment, what they are going through in their age, their developmental needs, uh, because they're able to understand because they're just living in the present. You can't talk anything about the future, uh, like for adults, you know, talk about something of the future, their past, how, how to deal with their past, how to, you know, uh, 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 wait on the Lord for the future, what they need to do to prepare for the future. These children will not be able to understand. They live in the present, so connect the, uh, uh, you know, Bible stories, the teachings, uh, whatever, to their present uh, uh, day situations and what they are going through. Uh, they learn best from creative activities, so you need to plan a lot of creative activities and how you can, um, uh, you know, share the truths. Um, they also love to learn, explore, and um, uh, investigate. So they just love to uh, learn. They love love to, um, you know, uh, uh, they like like to research things. They like to know why. They ask a lot of why questions uh, because they're very very curious. They like to explore things. Uh, so if you have a lot of why questions from these uh, this age group, you need to be very patient because you need to know that they are learning. They're exploring. Uh, whatever they ask, you know, they'll just literally come and ask you. So they. In the weekend, I was just listening to one parent who has a seven-year-old, and uh, he was saying that, you know, I need so much of wisdom uh, uh, how to uh, answer my kids uh, because my uh, son is just seven-year-old, and uh, he came home and uh, from school and asked me, who is a lesbian? So he was pretty shocked uh, because he said these words, you know, we never knew when we were seven year old. I don't know how to answer him, what to tell him. Uh, so basically what they hear from, uh, you know, the, uh, the the older children while they're in the field or they're going to school bus or, uh, you know, uh, uh, wherever in school, you know, they are listening to things and uh, they just want to know. They just want to explore. Um, no, and he was saying uh, his seven-year-old came back and uh, 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 after church and said, I know what is Trinity. I understand what's the meaning of Trinity. So he was looking dumbfounded at his child, you know, talking about Trinity, saying he understood the whole concept of Trinity. Uh, so they basically take things just like you, as you tell them, uh, just registers in their mind, but they love to learn, explore, and investigate. They think uh, uh, more concretely that, uh, you know, uh, they're able to uh, uh, separate fact from uh, fiction, from fantasy, uh, uh, you know, they're able to know what is what, why, why you do these things, uh, why you should be doing these things, they're able to think more concretely, and they're also growing in their language skills, they're able to speak, communicate uh, a little more better. Um, And they're able to uh, sort out between fact and uh, fan fantasy. Physically, they're growing slowly, but sporadically. That means it's not a uh, 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 you know periodical kind of a growth. Uh, it's not like you know consistent, but 
you know, suddenly they, you see a little growth that happens very periodically. They have a lot of energy, energy bursts. Sometimes they're super uh, excited, super uh, high on their energy levels. And sometimes they can be totally down. Uh, you know, or uh, they just, uh, they're not interested. They feel very lethargic and moody and lazy. Uh, they get tired uh, very, very easily. Uh, and they have a difficulty sitting um, uh, still. So you, that's why I said you need to, you know, uh, engage them in a lot of activities because uh, they are full of energy, full of life. Uh, so you, you know, uh, they want to continuously keep doing things. And also we live in an age where children now are so open, uh, are so exposed to, uh, uh, to media, to cartoon net, to cartoons, uh, to movies, and every second there is a change, you know, uh, there's a change in the background, change the color, the, the voice tone. Uh, so, you know, uh, if you are narrating a Bible story to this age group who are so glued to their TV, their television sets, to uh, to media, to, uh, you know, to their phones, uh, the, uh, the parents' phones, where they're looking at uh, 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 Bible movies, uh, 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 related to Bible uh, stories, also looking at Cartoon Network, looking at, uh, uh, you know, various uh, other related activities. Uh, even in school, they've started media presentation where they use, uh, you know, PowerPoint, where they use uh, um, uh, various uh, tools to teach them uh, rhymes, songs. Uh, so if we are going to be still outdated in the sense of, uh, you know, just narrating to them stories, they're not going to be, uh, 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 they're not going to be interested. They won't enjoy uh, children's church or Sunday school because, you know, uh, you know, in, in, they're living in a, in a digital world where they're constantly looking at, uh, you know, screens and color and movie and uh, uh, there's a change in um, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the movie screen uh, every minute, every second also sometimes. Uh, so because of that, you know, their concentration level is uh, very low when you are just speaking to them and narrating to them. So it's very important that you plan a lot of activities, you use a lot of, uh, uh, you know, PowerPoints or uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, these posters that you can use for uh, showing children movie, uh, uh, narrating stories or also uh, flannel graphs, which you can use so that, you know, uh, uh, they are engaged, they're listening and they are interested. Um, Spiritually, uh, these children le uh, enjoy learning at church. They, they love coming to, uh, sorry. Uh, they enjoy learning at church. They are open to learning about God. Um, and they also find it very difficult to express their emotions like, uh, uh, you know, uh, the other age groups. So you need to, uh, uh, you know, if they're crying. You need to help them to uh, uh, tell you what why they are crying, whether they're upset, they're sad, they're frightened, uh, they're disappointed, they feel lost or uh, whatever. So you need to help them to express their emotions. Uh, you know, uh, also uh, these children in this age group, they, they pray easily if encouraged. Uh, so, you know, you can encourage them to uh, pray. Uh, and also they ac accept what authority figures tell them, whether it's their parents, their teachers, they accept everything. They just uh, take everything as you tell them, they just take it. Uh, so you, it's very important how you uh, tell them, how you explain to them, because uh, this is an age where you just, uh, you know, uh, uh, inculcating in them uh, values, moral values, the choices that they have to make. Uh, so explaining to them, telling them why is very, very important because that kind of uh, gets ingrained in their uh, in their minds. Um, and uh, because they easily accept whatever you say because they just love you as teachers, as parents. Um, uh, so it's a good time to also teach them, uh, speak into their lives, uh, you know, and inculcate uh, godly values and how to make the right uh, choices. Uh, socially, they love uh, to have make friends. Uh, they have best friends, but, you know, they keep quarreling and fighting with each other very often. So their friends change very often. Uh, they kind of mimic uh, the adults in their, uh, their lives. Uh, 
they kind of imitate you so it's very important uh, you know as teachers as parents um, how we present ourselves before them we need to be very careful how we speak how we act or how we do things because they're watching us and they are just uh, copying us they're just learning from us because they're basically living in the present so they just learn they just receive quickly uh, so very important how we act how we speak in front of them uh, how we uh, conduct our lives uh, because the way we conduct our lives is going to have a far-reaching impact on their lives uh, uh, in the present and also in the future. Um, they are... Uh, why this is not coming on? Okay. Okay, uh, they're very uh, loyal to their uh, teachers, uh, you know, uh, you can just, even if you, uh, you kind of discipline them, uh, you know, you correct them, uh, but you know, they'll come back, they'll show you a lot of love, they're very loyal to you. Uh, so, you know, uh, you need to uh, show them, correct them in love, uh, uh, show a lot of acceptance, uh, care, uh, uh, because that will have a far-reaching impact on their lives. Uh, they have a developed sense of uh, right and wrong, so they know what, they're beginning to know what is right, what is wrong. Uh, so, you know, it's good at this age to uh, teach them, uh, not think that they're too young, they're just only in grade one, two or three, you know, uh, but teach them. Them what is right and wrong and they enjoy working in groups so you can have a lot of group activities for them uh, small group games uh, which they enjoy compared to uh, the three and uh, four year old okay so um, these children in this age group uh, six years uh, can be very a bit bossy and demanding uh, so, you know, you need to know how to uh, answer them, how to get them around to do things, uh, how to you know keep them in the loop, how to keep them uh, engaged, uh, and also how you could, uh, you know, complete what you have planned for them, uh, uh, irrespective of them being a little bossy and demanding. They would sometimes say, you know, they're not interested, they want to go and play, or, you know, uh, uh, they're just feeling tired, they want to sleep. Uh, but you know, you need to know how to work along with them. Um, the seven-year-olds, you know, tend to get worried very easily and take life very seriously. So if they've lost their water bottle or a pencil or an eraser, you know, they can get very, very worried and serious. So, you know, don't tell them uh, uh, it's just a small thing. You know, I don't know why you're so uh, worried and serious. It, you know, you will find it. It will be somewhere here. But you need to just understand that, you know, uh, seven-year-olds get tend to get very worried and serious uh, very, very easy. Uh, easily they take life very seriously so you need to help them uh, you know uh, and say the right things and help them out to handle their emotions and how they can uh, you know ease down cool down uh, and not be very anxious and uh, you know worried about things so easily uh, eight-year-olds are very enthusiastic and outgoing so you know uh, they love to do things so you can you know engage them in a lot of activities that will uh, excite them which will help them uh, then uh, and the nine year olds are very independent and rather rebellious uh, because they are growing up um, they like to do things uh, the way they like to do things uh, you know uh, sometimes they might not even uh, listen to you sometimes they might uh, uh, you know kind of be very uh, rebellious but you need to you know uh, know how to get them around uh, speak to them how you can help them out okay uh, basically uh, how to teach younger elementary kids uh, effectively just like to uh, point a few things here uh, treat each child as unique individuals uh, Okay, treat each child as uh, uh, unique individuals, uh, you know, provide activities where they can experiment and explore things, uh, object, le object lessons can help, you know, craft activities, um, uh, puzzles where they can, you know, do these number puzzles uh, uh, and then, you know, find out what their memory verse is or they can work out the number puzzles and they can find out uh, the matching alphabets and find out what is the fill in the blank, which for important truths that you like to communicate uh, because they love to experiment, they love to experiment 
explore. Um, uh, they uh, actually they live in the present, so you need to help them how they can apply uh, what you are teaching them here in the present and in the now. Uh, how you can uh, help them with their challenges, what they are going through. Uh, you know, plan some activity uh, for each lesson which is very very important because they love activities they are full of energy they have this energy burst they're enthusiastic they love to learn uh, they're also learning how to read write and count so you can give them basic uh, puzzles which will engage them which will uh, excite them uh, which will help them enhance their uh, uh, you know exploring skills and investigating skills uh, they also like to do a lot of craft activities uh, so you know you can get them to do a craft uh, avoid working on details uh, you know uh, they might do craft activities they might engage in various things uh, but don't get too detailed and focus on things you know just keep it very simple and plain uh, you need to also this age group you know explain to children what is the difference between facts and fantasy because they're kind to uh, kind of um, understanding how to think concretely uh, so you need to help them to understand what a fact is what is fantasy uh, because uh, like we uh, looked at the developmental needs of children in ages three to four you know they fantasize a lot uh, so they're kind of growing out of it and you need to help them with this um, also just make you know worship and prayer a na natural uh, a part of your time together because uh, uh, they love to worship they love to sing they're also learning how to uh, pray and even as they uh, you know are uh, children who basically um, you know um, uh, are very loyal to their teachers you know you, you need to earn their respect and uh, uh, admiration so you know uh, do things that uh, which will earn uh, uh, respect in, in their eyes uh, which they will be able to admire you and uh, you know uh, and it will be easy for you to work around uh, with them they believe everything you tell them so you need to be very careful uh, you know what you're telling them because facts and fantasies can be very confusing for them uh, so you need to be very very clear intentional about what you're speaking how you're presenting the truths how you're telling them the narratives um, speak literally because they understand things very very literally you know uh, so uh, you know tell them the truth as it is uh, but explain it to them because they understand things literally they take things as it is um, they also be beginning to find out who they are what they like uh, so give them choices. So if they don't like uh, craft, uh, you know, if they don't like uh, sticking or cutting, they just like coloring, L give them uh, that, uh, uh, that uh, you know, space to do what they like. Uh, if they don't like uh, coloring, they don't like uh, craft activities, give them some puzzle which will engage their mindset because that is their way of, uh, you know, they, they love to learn. They're going to learn the different learning styles. So that is their learning styles. So just uh, give them. Some children learn through mathematical puzzles or just through puzzles. Some children don't like anything to do with puzzles. They just like uh, drawing and painting and coloring. Some children don't have to do anything with puzzles or drawing and painting they're just like cutting and sticking and you know uh, uh, craft activities so you can have uh, you know alternate uh, activities for them uh, which will help engage them if they don't basically like something then don't force them uh, you know you can just basically say okay you can sit around just observe the others if you don't have a puzzle or anything uh, but if you have something it will be very engaging and uh, enriching experience for uh, them they love to help um you know so give them uh, a room to uh, you know help to pack up things to lay out things uh to an enact to uh, you know help you with the object lessons and all of that because that is uh, you know going to give them a huge boost to their own self confidence uh, you know uh, even if uh, you know sometimes you can get them to come up in front do an action song get them to come and uh, narrate the story or act out the story get them parts to do uh, it just boosts their self uh, confidence uh, so give every uh, uh, child in, in the class a chance to help in the areas where they what they like to 
uh, 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 do. Okay, and also provide them classroom jobs that kids can take turns in accomplishing, uh, which will just enhance their self confidence, boost their self confidence, their own self image. They're very active, so don't expect these. Uh, you know, these children in this age group to sit uh, quiet for more than five minutes, uh, provide them some sort of action. So even if you're teaching them something like, uh, you know, uh, like, uh, for example, Pharaoh, uh, you know, the plagues, uh, you know, you can have puppets with the various plagues on your fingers. You can even give it to them. They can put it on uh, or you can give one child each puppet so they can put up uh, the puppet in their, in their finger, whichever finger they have. They can raise it up. Uh, or, you know, if uh, you're narrating to them something very monotonous like uh, the plagues uh, and, you know, um, uh, you, at the end of it, you can say when, uh, but Pharaoh, it was stubborn and hard-hearted and he did not let the people go so you know you can just teach them these two actions so uh, at the end of each play that you say you know uh, when you say that uh, but pharaoh was so stubborn and hard-hearted you know they're ready to do their action and uh, they did not he did not let the people go okay so uh, they are looking forward when they can do that action because you are just engaging them so you can think of uh, various uh, things like this where you can engage them if it's not just uh, you know getting them to enact or sing a song or you know do an action you just want to narrate a story but you can get them also uh, involved or you know sometimes um, uh, if it is uh, you're narrating a story you can say okay this uh, I'm going to narrate a story uh, uh, you know and these are the voices I want to make who will make these voices so when I say this part of the story you have to make the voice so like when uh, the disciples got into the boat and they were all talking so they can you know the children can start chattering and um, uh, you know and suddenly you know and they all stay quiet they all do action like this and uh, the wind starts blowing so you say Ooh, you know and uh, there's thunder and there's uh, you know lightning they can clap their hands for thunder whatever you know just uh, something very innovative something that will excite them uh, so you can you can uh, use that uh, because they are they they love to use their energy their skills they want to experiment things uh, they're excited um, uh, so, you know, uh, get them to do various uh, movements that they can uh, also participate in the uh, story. Okay. Uh, they're competitive by nature and they may not take a losing to games and activities very well, uh, but you need to teach them as well. You know that it's okay uh, to lose uh, we can't always be first uh, but how to handle that emotion um, which does not mean that we should not have competitive games no uh, we have competitive games not all the time uh, but uh, uh, you know uh, uh, but help them to you know go through this process of knowing that hey we can lose you know we don't always win all the time but we can learn from you know uh, when we lose when we fail it can be a learning experience so that next time we can do uh, better because they're very competitive by nature they don't like losing games or act uh, or when they do an activity so you need to help them uh, out um the way they think is they're very subject to their emotions and to their self-esteem uh, if they're worried or, or, or unhappy, you know, they will not concentrate, they will not think properly, um, uh, you know, they don't have the strength to overcome their worries uh, 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 and they need help to, you know, get those sorted out. Uh, so you need to uh, help them out through all of this, you know, and um, uh, sometimes if their self-esteem is low, they will uh, not try new tasks. So you need to know, uh, you know, whether it's their self-esteem that is uh, you know hindering them from trying new stuff or it's just their learning style so you need to understand each child and uh, help them out if it's their self-esteem with their saying basically no to everything then you know it's their self-esteem but if they're liking something then you know okay this is their learning style this is where they're learning better so they enhance them in that area but if they're uh, you know not uh, willing to take on any new tasks you know it's their self-esteem you need to uh, help them out Okay, um, uh, they just need help to sort out their arguments and disagreements in play during playtime. Uh, so you can help them out. 
um, uh, they are also very bossy, timid, uncertain, brash. Uh, so you need to teach them uh, because they're learning also what is right and wrong. Um, uh, so you need to help them to understand their emotions, how they can uh, love others, how they can be uh, accommodative, uh, how they can self-sacrifice. That's why this, you know, I said we need to teach this all of these things for this age group. Okay, uh, so what can you do for this age group? You know, they love listening to stories, encourage them in a realistic way, uh, give them little individual time. The more individual time you spend with this age group is going to have a lasting impact because they are sorting out things in various areas, their emotions, their thinking, their behavior, you know, accommodating others, loving others, sharing with others, um, uh, and also take time to uh, uh, build a relationship with each child you know, uh, so that you can uh, help them understand, uh, uh, you know, help them also to understand uh, uh, who they are, their expertise, their skills, where they're good at, help them if they have a low self-esteem, self-image, self-value. And, uh, you know, because they they actually adore their teachers, they love their teachers, they're very loyal. So they will easily learn from you, easily, uh, you know, change, and you can easily help them uh, in this uh, age group. Okay. Uh, any questions? About seven to nine-year-olds? I hope all of you are there with me in class. Yes. Okay. If there are no questions, for the questions, we'll move to uh, children uh, eight to ten years old. I know I just uh, actually shared uh, with you about uh, children in um, uh, ages seven to nine, just a, a little overlap, but uh, we'll look at children uh, ages eight to uh, Okay. Uh, the goals for this age group is basically they're learning about their strengths, their gifts, their talents, uh, the areas they're good at. So they're learning to accept themselves. Uh, you need to have uh, stories, narratives, truths from the Bible that will help them along these lines. Um, they're learning to get along with others. They're learning to make friends. So, you know, also Bible narratives that will help them to love uh, stories on how they need to love their neighbor uh, uh, as they love themselves. Um, also, how God loves us, how he expects us to love others just the way he loves us, forgive others, uh, will just uh, help them, uh, you know, uh, in this in this age. Uh, understanding that they're all different, they're able to accept their own differences, and also able to accept that all of them are different, that God has created each one of us unique, different, uh, special. So, you know, the various narratives in the Bible that you're te teaching them, you can, you know, talk about and connect. Hey, we learned about Moses, you know, Moses had these strengths, these weakness, uh, weaknesses, we're learning about Joshua, he has the strengths, he has his weaknesses. Uh, we learned about uh, uh, Zacchaeus or Bartimaeus or Jairus, you know, whatever. You know, uh, so when you go back, you're basically going back and forth with all the narratives that you taught them. You're telling them how each one of us are different. We all have our strengths and weaknesses, how important it is to accept all of us, how God accepts us with all our strengths and weaknesses, how we need to accept um, each other. They're also at this age group, um, you know, uh, beginning to learn um uh, about their role in society, uh, their responsibility to their family and their friends. So you can teach them to be uh, responsible, the importance of uh, carrying on their little responsibilities they have. Uh, they're also early readers. They're able to read uh, with a little more increasing uh, uh, ease. Uh, uh, they read for information so you can get them to look up things in the Bible, read verses. Uh, uh, you can also get them to write down their uh, memory verses. Uh, you know, if you want to uh, engage them in, uh, you know, uh, in reiterating truths, you can just give them simple fill in the blanks, true and false questions that will reiterate the truths that you taught them, uh, you know, uh, 
also they uh, play with written word games so uh, there's a lot of uh, free uh, available material on um, uh, word games i will show that to you when we're talking about how to prepare our lesson plans uh, but uh, exciting things for uh, these age groups which will help them uh, through these word games puzzles to find out what is a topic that you're teaching them uh, you know uh, to uh, write down the memory verse using different numbers uh, you know corresponding to different alphabets so they look at the numbers write down the alphabet and that gives them their memory verse or the truth that they're learning or what they need to uh, apply okay uh, children in this um, age group are also learning to write paragraphs and uh, give oral reports so you can get them to uh, you know uh, speak on what they have learned uh, uh, what the narrative is teaching them, uh, what's the truths they have learned, uh, so that you're able to understand whether they have, a, uh, you know, have got uh, the whole, uh, you know, crux of what you are basically trying to communicate to them. If you're teaching them a theological truth, you can kind of reiterate that by asking them questions. They're also learning to write in paragraphs, but not fully, so you they need help. So don't give them long question and answers, just short ones will, uh, will do for this uh, age group. Okay, they're also learning to do different types of uh, chores at home and school, so you can get them and, uh, you know, get them to uh, uh, help you out. Um, that way, as you're, uh, you know, achieving the goal of teaching them to be responsible, to take on responsibility. Uh, they also play complex group games and even competitive sports. So uh, for this age group onwards, you can have a little more uh, complex uh, group games compared to uh, the earlier age groups that we uh, so, um, okay, um, they're very good with their uh, glues, you know, cutting and sticking and, uh, you know, doing elaborate uh, craft activities. Uh, they're also learning, uh, you know, other, uh, 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 you know, activities like uh, knitting, baking, you know, uh, uh, putting up a tent or laying out the chairs, whatever, you know, uh, so you can teach them all of this. Uh, basically don't get them to use the hammer and screwdriver and saw and all of that is learning but they'll be interested in using that but uh, you know that can um, be a little dangerous for them which we don't want to get into uh, but if you're taking them camping and stuff like that you know you can teach them but they need guidance they need help basically their uh, you know their motor skills are getting more refined becoming more finer so you can uh, help them with and give them more complex craft activities which they will enjoy uh, uh, they also uh, can do um, uh, puzzles, um, play a lot of, uh, uh, you know, games, uh, they, because they're memorizing a lot of uh, uh, tables, uh, mathematical tables, multiplication tables, in, in, sorry, multiplication tables in school. Uh, so you can give them a little more complex puzzles that, uh, you know, that will help them to uh, engage in uh, what you're teaching them, uh, reiterating what you have uh, taught to them. Uh, so also because uh, they're growing and they're learning a lot of more uh, detailed things, uh, you know, uh, you can get them to memorize a lot of scripture, not just one or two verses uh, or lines in scripture, uh, but you can get them to learn uh, like 23rd Psalm, the Lord's Prayer, the Beatitudes, what is love, uh, the definition of love, uh, uh, you know, all of those things in the Bible, uh, you can get them to um, memorize, okay? You can also get them to memorize the different books of the Bible so they know where uh, each book is. Um, also the names of the disciples, uh, the fruit of the Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit, all of that you can uh, get them to uh, memorize. They also learn to pray together and individually, but they need lots of help and confidence in this area. So the more you're giving them opportunities, uh, it, uh, the more it's going to uh, help them. They're uh, also beginning to understand the historical overview of the Bible so you can, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, get them to understand uh, why God chose the Israelites going back to Abraham, uh, why he was special to them, uh, why he gave them all of those laws, uh, why he called them his priests, uh, why were his chosen people and all of that. Uh, also, you know, um, uh, helping them to see 
uh, things in the historical setting, why Jesus was born at that time, uh, why he was called the Messiah and, uh, you know, uh, all of those things, what people's expectation was, what is the uh, cultural background in that place, historical background, uh, in a very, very uh, simple way, uh, but will help them to understand uh, in depth uh, what uh, the whole uh, the uh, the narrative, the setting, it is uh, that is there, able to interpret it be a scripture better, understand um, a scripture better. Okay, the spiritual messages uh, they need to hear is basically a salvation message, uh, also that you know we can uh, they can accept Jesus as their Lord and uh, person Savior. Uh, God loves them, not only them but everyone else. Uh, uh, so he loves everyone, whether they're good or bad, he loves them, but he does not like the bad things that they do, but he loves everyone. He's not a partial God. Um, also that uh, he knows about them, he knows, he sees what they are doing. Uh, he loves them just as they are. Uh, he has, uh, God has a wonderful Okay, God has a wonderful um, plan for their lives. God will never leave them, uh, nor forsake them. Uh, you can learn, teach them how they can trust in God, put their faith um, in all in God. Also, you know, teach them about uh, God, the characteristic, the nature, the attributes of God. Uh, he is omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscient. Um, and also that there's nothing they can do to make God love them more or uh, love them less. Uh, he loves them. His love is constant. His love never changes. Uh, God is love. You need to explain to them what is the meaning of that. Uh, because, uh, you know, they learning to uh, love and accept themselves, uh, learning to build up their self-image, their self-value. So all of these things can be very, very uh, important. Also that Jesus is the way, he's the only way because, uh, you know, um, because um, um, they're learning uh, different things from their friends, they're listening to their friends, you know, friends who are from different religions, uh, but we need to uh, explain to them why Jesus is the only way, why is salvation only uh, through Jesus. Um, so, you know, those things we need to elaborate, explain, look uh, uh, detail for this age group. Um, also that, you know, uh, salvation is uh, by grace and not by works uh, because, you know, uh, at this age group, the performance becomes very, very important. Uh, how they do in school, uh, you know, their grades matters. Uh, uh, they love to, uh, you know, uh, 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 take part in various things. If they lose, they, they feel they're a loser, they're a failure. Uh, they're not doing well in their studies. All this has a great impact on their lives. Uh, so important to explain to them that, you know, uh, God loves them and salvation. And then his love is not based on what they do, who they are, how they behave. Um, but, you know, uh, they're saved by grace and not by uh, works. Okay. Uh, and also you can teach children how to evangelize, how to share the gospel uh, with others uh, uh, in simple ways, how they can uh, minister to their friends in school because um, uh, they're very friendly. They love to share. They love to speak about various things. Um, and, they, they, you know, they uh, they think they take things literally. They just speak things literally uh, so they can just share it as and how you teach them, tell them. Uh, so it's a good, uh, 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 you know, time when uh, our Christian children can also minister to other children because, you know, they are uh, waiting to experiment. Uh, they're waiting to investigate. Uh, they're waiting. They're, they're wanting to learn things. Uh, uh, you know, uh, they're also excited to uh, listen to what others say. They take things literally in this age group. So very good age to help them to evangelize, to share the gospel uh, in simple ways. Just telling them, you know, just share uh, how, uh, uh, you know, Jesus loves you or, you know, how Jesus did a miracle in your life or uh, how he answered your prayer or uh, just talk about good God's goodness and faithfulness and how he helped you. Uh, so when they're sharing this with their other children in that same age group who take things literally as is said to them uh, and they like to experiment, investigate, do it, 
they will also try it out and you know they can uh, they can even uh, 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 you know, uh, Jesus, his ways, uh, his doing their lives, miracles, and that can be very, very exciting uh, for this age group. And um, many children in this age group at a very young age will also, because of uh, the Christian children in their class, will be able to uh, know that Jesus answers, hears their prayer, answers, he's a miracle working God, he loves them, he cares for uh, them. Okay. So those are the basic things about uh, children in this age group. Any questions anyone has? Any questions? No? Okay. There are no questions. Uh, we'll move on to children in uh, 11 and uh, what, 11 and 12 years old. Uh, Okay, the goal for this age group is basically that they're learning more about their strengths and gifts. Uh, uh, so, you know, um, uh, they're basically learning to accept themselves, uh, getting along with others well, making friends. Uh, they're also learning to handle their own uh, emotions, uh, also learning techniques to resolve conflicts because they can have fights. Uh, with the uh, you know uh, with uh, their classmates with their own friends uh, with their siblings or how to resolve conflicts so all of those narrative stories uh, can um, you know help achieve this goal uh, also as uh, in the previous age group that we looked at you know um, eight to uh, ten year old uh, you know they also in the same age group they're learning to uh, accept uh, their differences so narratives that will help them uh, you know uh, along these lines can um, help okay um, they uh, enjoy reading they basically uh, you know read for um, uh, self-enjoyment relaxation or they just read for information uh, they're able to use the information that they read to write reports or papers uh, you know write stories uh, write poems uh, also you know they uh, beginning to do a lot of project work so they uh, they can do it so you can get them to you know uh, 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 begin to write stories uh, 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 enhance their skill in this area, uh, get them also to write uh, poems, uh, songs, you know, for this age group, uh, you never know, you know, uh, they can even write a, a song, a poem that can be used as a song, uh, which just, uh, you know, uh, shows their, what they're going through, their challenges, their emotions, uh, you know, helping them to, uh, in their creative arts, how they can release the uh, supernatural. Uh, they also are able to find answers to questions. Uh, so, you know, you can get them to uh, think, write down their thoughts about uh, why did this character in this bible behave this way what should he have done uh, differently um uh, what do you think uh, would be the consequences of what he did and all of those things so uh, you can get them to write down their own thoughts you can also get them to meditate on scripture how help them uh, to know how to meditate scripture write down their thoughts what they are learning uh, and all of those things uh, children in this age group uh, you know uh, enjoy complex games uh, team games competitive sports so you can um, when you plan activities or games for them you can basically get them uh, to do all of these things um, um, yeah they're also um, you know um, can do a lot of complex art stuff so you can get them to do more creative art uh, you know, uh, like uh, paintings, sculptures, painting on t-shirts, uh, uh, beadwork, leatherwork, and all of those things, which, uh, you know, they can, they can, again, you know, enhance the supernatural and who, and this whole thing, bring about the supernatural as they're doing it, you know, think about, uh, you know, what message God is, the Holy Spirit is communicating through this, who he wants you to give this to, and, uh, you know, pray over it, give it to that person, uh, just a painting, just a drawing, how it can uh, minister to uh, people. Also, you know, um, 
there you can encourage them to uh, you know uh, participate in group chores in the classroom cleaning up you know um, take turns doing things uh, pack up uh, set up like in at APC because we don't have our own venue you know we uh, we have to do uh, set up we have to do pack up so you can get children this uh, age group to help uh, if you're serving uh, uh, you know uh, snacks uh, they can you know uh, help out in serving snacks for the younger children um, also take responsibility um, in uh, you know helping uh, the younger children when you have team activities uh, team uh, games group games or when you're doing things uh, together how they can take responsibility in helping the younger ones uh, to play the game to do the activity uh, along with uh, them also um, you know a good time to take them for various evangelistic uh, mission trips like you know um, uh, to uh, 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 home for the old age or for those who are sick or uh, those who are needy and uh, this will just help them to you know pray for them to look at the needs of others consider the needs of others and uh, help others as well sorry i didn't look at the time i was just going on and on okay uh, we'll stop here uh, anyone has any questions no Sorry, it's kind of getting very monotonous, but uh, it's very important that we go through this. So we'll go through this quickly. Uh, I think just another class and then we'll get done and then we'll move on to uh, a more exciting things. OK, uh, there are no questions. We'll end class. Um, thank you all for um, joining class today. And I'll see you for uh, in the next uh, hour for first meeting. Thank you, everyone.